Hey, what's going on? Justin here from Modern Mixing. And today I'm going to give you another tutorial. And this one I wanted to talk about how you can make your mixes louder using harmonic distortion. So with harmonic distortion, essentially what you're doing is you're adding overtones to the fundamental frequency of the sound. And each uh, you know harmonic distortion or distortion unit will do that in its own way. Usually it's a multiple. Um, so you know it could be a multiple for one unit of like say two, five, and ten. And essentially what that means is if it's a hundred hertz is your fundamental, a multiple of two would be two hundred hertz, a multiple of five would be five hundred hertz, and a multiple of ten would be you know one kilohertz. But uh, that's what it's doing. So it's adding more to the sound. Uh, so your sound is a little bit richer. It's a little bit fuller. It's a little bit thicker. And um, it's just a little bit more interesting. It comes to life. And um, what ends up happening is when you add these harmonics, it kind of pulls the sound a little bit more forward in the mix. But also when you're adding harmonic distortion, it's not just adding these harmonics. What you're sort of doing as well is it's it's kind of its own little compression. So it's it's rounding off the peaks. It's shaving them off just a little bit. So essentially, you're adding more weight to the mid range of the sound. Plus, you're also cutting out a little bit of the peaks. So um, you know, once you bring that sound up back to the original peak volume of what it was, it sounds a lot louder. And depending on the unit that you use and how good it is and how good it sounds you actually be doing this and you wouldn't be losing a lot of dynamic information from because it just does it in such a musical way. So uh, the two that I use in this particular example were the Camel Crusher and the Satsun. Uh, they both do two different things. So that's why I want to get a couple of different um, opinions or you know examples to show you so you can kind of compare the differences. Um, but the end result is you know you know fairly similar I guess. But, um, but yeah, so anyways, what I would normally advise is to kind of start off with harmonic distortion inside your mixes and not do it on the final mix. But the main re reason why I wanted to use this is because the effects are pretty dramatic. So from before to after, um, it's just a lot quicker and a lot easier to show you than opposed to breaking down a full mix and showing you each little element and then bypassing and unbypassing and all that stuff. So this is just a simple way of doing it. And, um, anyways, hopefully you can get something from this. So let's start with the, the first one, which is the Camel Crusher plugin. I also put a limiter after it, but it's not really doing much. So we'll play it, and then what I'll do is I'll unbypass it while it's playing, and then you'll hear the difference. Your cousin is pink, give me a heart attack. Change my So let's go on to the Satsun now and let's see what that one's doing. I also added a limiter for this one too. Again, we'll do the before and after and we'll buy I'll unbypass it while it's playing. Okay, so they do they do slightly different things as far as the harmonics are concerned. So uh, now what I'll do is I'll play um, the track and then I'll unbypass the Camel Crusher and then I'll do the Satsun so you can kind of hear it side by side and see what they're doing. So now that you kind of heard that on a track, let's kind of go into the signal generation side of things. So uh, this is um, this is a frequency analyzer from Blue Cat, and I have a signal generator here from Avid, and I'm using 100 hertz. So what I'll do is I'll show you what each plugin is doing. So I'll start off with the Camel Crusher, and then you'll see it come up here, and then you'll see what the overtones uh, look like when I'm adding the harmonics to it. So this might be a little bit annoying. It's like a constant, you know, 100 hertz signal. So if you have to, just turn your speakers down.
Now, if you look at this fader over here, it's actually not really moving. I mean, it's jumping once I engage the plugin, but level for level, it's basically the same. And I was able to do that with the volume. I was able to get them around the same volume input and output because I just wanted to show you that it's actually adding those upper mid-range harmonics to it. So you're perceiving as like, okay, wow, this is much louder, but it's actually not. So again, I'll try that again. And you just check that out. All right, so let's bring up the sats in here, and we'll see this one. And again, this this one, you're able to hear uh, a major difference in what the two of them do to the signal. So with the sats and it's jumping a little bit here, maybe a dB or two, but the problem with these meters is they're not very accurate, so you can't really see what's going on. But uh, the point is, is that even that little bit of a jump, uh, jump, the the difference in volume, at least perceived volume to the to the listener, is quite dramatic. So this is just one piece of the puzzle. This will help you, you know, get your mixes a little bit to the next level. And also with other techniques and, and other stuff, you can do that as well. But uh, I'll go into that in some other videos in the future. And uh, until then, I'll talk to you later. I wanted to get rid of, but also there's a little bit of boxy honkiness. So I'll uh, also work on that too. So to find the resonance, with this EQ, it's actually kind of cool because I can pull down kind of my uh, my band here and then I can just double click it to turn it on and double click it to turn it off and then I can move it. So.